And it's an absolute treat to be able to welcome back Tony Brown to Tuscaloosa, Green Bay Packer, former Alabama defensive back. Tony, I hope you're having a great day, sir. Welcome back to T-Town. What's up? How you doing? Good, good. I hope you are doing well, man. Yes, sir. Fresh out of practice. I got you. I got you. Well, we, listen, we want to uh, obviously catch up a little bit and uh, talk a little Alabama football and Green Bay Packer football. But uh, I, I'd like to start just for a couple of minutes as you continue to represent the Alabama legacy in Green Bay. And uh, certainly Bart Starr has been on our mind the last couple of days. And I think without a visit to Green Bay with you, uh, what's it been like there and in, in, in the attitude of losing a legend like Bart Starr, not just for the Green Bay Packers, but a connection back to the University of Alabama as well? Well, when I got the news, uh, I mean, I was slightly shocked. I know he was a little older. Um, I know I know how life is, you know what I'm saying, also. So it was a little shocker. But, like, uh, as far as the team and, like, as far as how we took it, um, you know what I'm saying? Everyone has their own individual feelings about the situation. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I was definitely shocked at his death. You know what I'm saying? We lost a great, we lost a great one. So that was that's my thoughts on that. No doubt, Tony. I I always noticed, you know, when when you watch players, everybody has a unique relationship with Nick Saban. Something that I noticed about you, it was a little deeper relationship. You, you had a strong bond with Nick Saban, and, and that's from me as a member of the media watching your relationship with Nick Saban. That was a very strong relationship that you and Tony, you and, and Coach Saban shared. Am I correct about that? Uh, yes, sir. What what created that relationship? What was it that built that strong relationship between you and Coach Saban? Um, so the dynamic of uh, being a high school recruit is uh, the different dynamic with coaches in high school recruiting and college recruiting is that uh, colleges get to well when I was in high school they get they got to make visits uh, often so Coach Saban made a couple of visits to my to my school to my house Coach Burns also he was my recruiter Burton Burns they made a good amount of visits to my house I went to Alabama's camp uh, Coach Saban met my father um, and my mother. You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, before his accident and after, um, I I was there a lot of the time. I, I loved the vibe there. I, I had a great um, I had a great visit at his home. I became close to Miss Terry. My mom did too. And it almost was just like, based on the camp in high school, the home visit, the me being a top recruit, but also being the type of guy that develops relationships with people. So. And it ended up building even more when I decided to go to Alabama also. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, I always watch the little things, the way that you guys shared moments. And, you know, Nick Saban does it. You know, we see this hard Nick Saban, right? I mean, we see the, the one in front of the camera, you know, picking on us media guys, kind of having fun with us a little bit. But there is a different side of Nick Saban, right? I mean, I mean, there's this Nick Saban that we don't get a chance to see that you get a chance inside that locker room to see. Well, <laughs> don't say it's not the locker room. It's not the locker room. We probably get the same, one of the same Nick Saban as you guys see. But okay. in the different in the different settings, such as like on Thanksgiving or when we're at his home, when I'm at his home, or when we're outside of football, like now that I'm away from Bama, like whenever I'm around him, it's a different feeling as when I was a player at Alabama. So it's just the setting in which you're around him. You know what I'm saying? He's a he's a professional. You know what I'm saying? College coach. So. Of course, in the college setting, in the in the setting of media, he'll handle himself a certain way. In the setting of handling his players, handle them a certain way. But if you ever can get him like away from football, away from Coach Nick Saban, and just like talk to Nick Saban without the coach in front of it, then you'll actually get to see the real him. And I've been around him at his house and Thanksgiving, and where it's not even worried about football, and that's when you get to see like the other side of Coach Saban. Absolutely, and I think uh, that that's something that you can give us a lot of insight. We're talking to Tony Brown, Green Bay Packer. Uh, Tony, I, I'm curious, man, when you look at Green Bay, uh, the passion of those fans up there, those those guys are amazing, are they not? Yes, sir. I was uh, I was blessed to come to a team that has a very strong tradition, much like the, the school that I left, and they're also, well, also called Title Town up here, too. So it's definitely a blessing to, to be at a team in the NFL professionally where you
you have fans that you feel have your back through the good and the bad to where you can come to the game and still get that that college feel of of like a, a, a certain level of excitement pre game coming up to the stadium. Just a certain level of like and I know for some guys they feel like when you come become a professional the the like the the fun gets taken away from it. But I feel like a piece of that fun comes from the fans and how excited they are during the games, before the games, after the games. And like I said, I was blessed to be at a place where the the strong fans, like the fan base is so strong that you get that same collegiate vibe almost at the game. Tony, I, I want to go and, and, and kind of ask you, when, when you look at the University of Alabama, this expectation of winning a championship every single year, you guys have created this monster, and I started started prior to your arrival, but you kind of carried that tradition where in, in, in Tuscaloosa, you win a championship, it's a success. If you don't win a championship, you, you kind of come up a little bit short, and we kind of rule that I think uh, Nick Saban talked about a couple of years ago, don't waste a failure, and this year you lose to Clemson the way that we did. But is it fair to place expectations that only a championship is ruled a success in Tuscaloosa? Is that fair that we place that on, on those players? Well, I don't – I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's about it being fair or not because expectations from outside of the program are going to be there whether they're good or bad because that's something that has to be, you know, they have rankings preseason that are based off expectations. If they have they have everything preseason based on expectations and everything that gears the season is based on what teams are expected to do, so expectations are going to be there regardless. So if they're fair or not, is you know what I'm saying that's, that's that's neither here nor there. But the tradition of excellence that is at Alabama has nothing to do with outside expectations. There is a tradition of, like I said, there's a tradition of excellence and winning in the program that we have expectations for ourselves and a high standard of, of winning and playing for ourselves. Tony, what would you tell a defensive back? that's just coming in, that just arrived, school starts today for summer session number one. If a defensive back came to Tony Brown and said, hey, give me advice, how do I survive Nick Saban three and a half, four years, the expectations, Scott Cochran, everything Alabama, what advice would Tony Brown give a new player that just arrived on campus today? I would tell him to to believe in – the work ethic and the things that got him to where he were and the trust that Coach Saban will be able to give you the the keys to the car and to let you get to where you need to be, most definitely. Tony, do you, you see it paying off now in the NFL? Do, do you see uh, the, how Alabama maybe helped it make it easier? Not that anything's ever easy in the NFL, but going through a program like Alabama, can you see the benefit of maybe making it easier uh, the transition from the NFL or from college to the NFL? Well, the biggest thing that I see um, is that going to Alabama uh, kind of normalized the NFL, whereas if you get somebody that doesn't go to Alabama where they don't have a team where, well, let me not even say a team, but like every all four of my roommates are in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Deshaun Henry, Rashawn Evans, and uh, Marlon Huff, and that was my roommate. Also, Sean Dion was my roommate one time, so all of my roommates are in the NFL. So it kind of normalized going to the NFL and being a player in the NFL. Whereas you get a guy who might go to a different school that doesn't have the luxury of being around guys that are making it to the NFL. So it has a certain level of anonymity, like anonymity to like being a player. So I get that level of like comfort and it sort of standardized being a player. And so it kind of sort of let me take the next step after. You know what I'm saying, and to be, and I can be a great NFL player. I don't have to take the step of, you know what I'm saying, being a player wasn't a huge step for me. Like the step for me will be being an impact franchise player on a team. Like that'll be the step. Whereas some guys, the step is just making a team. You know what I'm saying. So I feel like I appreciate how it normalized being great, <laughs> like doing something amazing, which is making it to the making on the NFL team. 
Tony, what's your favorite moment in Tuscaloosa playing for the Crimson Tide? What's your favorite moment as you reflect on your playing days here in T-Town? All right, my favorite moment. That's easy. My favorite moment for sure would be the third time we played Clemson in the Sugar Bowl when we beat them how we did. Most definitely. I love it. I love your energy around that game. I mean, you, you that was an emotional game for you, was it not? Most definitely, being that how we lost in emphatic fashion the year before on the last second play, and then actually getting another chance to play them after losing to Auburn, and then still getting a chance to be in the playoffs, and so happened that it was Clemson. So that was that was, that was like meant to be, and then we did exactly what we were supposed to do. So can you almost understand what it's like in Tuscaloosa right now with the players that are still on this roster, what happened out in California can you kind of well, understand was, what those guys there, are going through? I was out there in California for the game, and I was out there this spring for like two weeks. I did some of the off-season stuff. Um, I was out there. So I felt the vibe. I saw the vibe, and it's exactly how you know, it's exactly how it should be. Very, they're, they're very locked in after a loss like the way they did. Like, they're, very, they're, they're so locked in to the point where, like, you can tell, you can feel that they're that they're not going to allow nothing like that to happen again. Well, listen, Tony, I'm going to let you get back. I know you just finished up uh, OTAs practice a couple of minutes ago, but uh, yes, I'll sir. pass it on, man. Hey, yes, l- listen, the, the the fans love you in Tuscaloosa. I know that you know this, but uh, when when I, when I brought up, I was going to br- uh, bring up Tony Brown. I mean, it got more than Joe Namath on last week. Tony Brown got more mentions. <laughs> <laughs> than Joe Namath did. So you're loved in T-Town, Tony Brown. <laughs> I love T-Town too, man. Well, thank you, man. Best of luck yes, to sir. you, man. Roll We're pulling tide. for you in Green Bay. Roll Tide to you.